No, but the Batman's coming. The reviews are uh, they're in now, right? The reviews are, are hitting it. We're seeing things. Uh, and I'm going to check on the um, Rotten Tomatoes site. I don't know if you guys, I don't really care for Rotten Tomatoes, but this is the aggregate. It's 88% currently. It's certified fresh. It just got the certified fresh at 88%. On rotten tomatoes not 90 mm-hmm. it's not in the 90s it's not in black panther territory it's not even in wonder woman territory at this point peacemaker far exceeded it although peacemaker is a tv show and you can't compare apples to oranges that way mm-hmm. but yeah you see 88 percent the way i'm seeing this guys is i think maybe people might be expecting too much from this movie and i don't know what that means necessarily but when you have expectations and you think a movie is going to be up here and it delivers just a little bit lower, then you think it's even worse than it is. But again, this is Rotten Tomatoes. Some of these might be three out of five, some of them four out of five, some 2.5 out of five. You don't know what it is. You don't know what no. they're saying. A, a rotten review might actually not even be rotten. It might just be like, yeah, I liked it. It just wasn't my favorite. So you look at 88%, Steve, does that hinder your expectations, your enthusiasm going into this movie? Not really. I don't pay attention too much to, uh, you know, reviews and whatnot. You know, I want to know just you know, thumbs up, thumbs down. Yeah, you like it. Yeah, you, you didn't like it. Okay, that's that, that's fine. Um, you know, if it's overwhelmingly negative reception, then yeah, that's going to affect how I how, how much I want to see a movie. Um, but yeah, I don't want to get into specifics of you know what didn't you like about the movie or what did you enjoy. Just give me the quick yay or nay, uh, and that's how word of mouth. Is so that's how that's going to determine how I see uh, Morbius, right? Batman. I got a pretty good expectation of uh, a, 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 a pretty good idea of what to expect. So like I said, I've already bought my ticket, so that, that's fine. So I'm, I'm not going to worry about Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> and Scott, are you returning your ticket? Oh, <laughs> uh, no, I was just going to say, it looks like I got some burner accounts to go create real fast. <laughs> Hang on. I got to dump some votes in here. Um, <laughs> but no, uh, I think the coolest part about DC and I keep saying it is that this is a new universe. I literally have no expectations because I have nothing to compare it to. We don't have a Superman to compare it to. We don't have a, we have no other character in this universe that we're going to be under a microscope. Like, okay, why is he doing this? Where is this person? It's just new. And I think a lot of other IPs could benefit from this type of a multiversal situation. And it puts a lot less stress on, the actors it puts a lot less stress on the directors he can be much more creative like i scream from the rooftops let creators create they should release the air cut they should release director's cuts like when did that stop they used to do director's cuts all the time there's director's cuts for aliens there's director's cuts for predator like what what is the big like you know well i don't know when did it become taboo to have a director's cut i guess well, oh, from yeah. everything Matt Reeves is my... saying, is is this is his director's cut? Awesome. That's what he's saying. Now, we'll talk about this a little bit. There was there is a word, and I think he's doing this to temper expectations that he cut a scene with Barry Key Cohen, Cohen, uh, and and it was at the end of the movie, unseen prisoner with the Riddler, and apparently it's a very fun scene, and he cut this scene. However, he said that there's a scene with Barry Cohen earlier in the movie that he's actually already in a scene earlier in the movie but he cut this really fun scene at the end of the movie and i think he's doing this to temper expectations for the joker being in this movie because i think it's kind of blown up and you know if we post a a video on this channel it gets you know 10 times more views than a video without the joker about batman on this channel and i could tell you you know the 75 views for a Catwoman video versus our 900 views for a Joker video. One of them's <laughs> actually in the movie. One of them is in the movie. They're, they're, like you know, one is actually about something. The other one is a speculation. But people have said that, and I think he's doing that so that when you go see this movie, if the Joker is not in it as much as you want, you'll be like, "Wow, he he told us that." So yeah. that that's what I'm thinking with that. But for me, I. I look. I don't even look at these reviews. I think it's you know what the hell's the point? I'm a Batman fan. I'm going to go see Batman. I bought my ticket. I'm not going to let you know Rotten Tomatoes skew my my view of it when I'm in the theater as well, which is something that I I, I think does happen. I think when you look at a movie and it has 99% of Rotten Tomatoes and you go into it and you're like that was fine, all of a sudden you're more inclined to have more disdain for that movie because it's supposed to be really good and amazing, but you're like, no, it's not. It was fine. And and that's what happened. And, and vice versa, right? When Uncharted gets 39% and you watch in the theater, you're like, I really like that. I'm going to give it 99%. Screw you critics. 
you don't know what you're talking about. And I think that's what we see here. And I'm mm -hmm. very curious, Scotty, to see what the audience score is heading into the weekend. Yeah, that's what I typically try to do. I try to wait for initial box office numbers above all because money talks. And then I'll like, yeah. And then most of the YouTubers or the people I respect the opinions of that have done reviews that are spoilery, like I watch them. I'll even watch that stuff before I go into a movie. So I'm kind of weird like that. Um, spoilers don't really pull me out of a thing. Um, a lot of times they actually get me more hyped. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're you're big on spoilers. Steve, are you big on spoilers? No, I try to avoid them as much as possible. That's why I like going to see the movie on opening night so when mm -hmm. I don't get those spoilers, right? And then I'm always careful not to give them. Um, but, yeah, so I, I try to avoid as much information as possible. Some things I will avoid, like the Kenobi show is something that I'm not too keen about too much, hearing too much about anymore, but it's, you know, funny what gets leaked and what doesn't get leaked either. You know, mm -hmm. if shows, if people really want to know this stuff, man, it's, it's going to come out, unfortunately. A, it'll be okay. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't, I find with leaks, especially, I, I think leaks are, they're planned. I think a lot of leaks are like, let's leak this and let's see how this I tracks. Think, I think toys are worse. I think toys, toys have ruined more movies than any they leakers. Just, super yeah. I know. They just leaked <laughs> all the all the the wardrobes and costumes for Thor, right? The new oh, Thor yeah. movie just got leaked in oh. action figures and Lego and stuff. It's like, okay, fine. Yep. Yeah, toys that's ruin why everything, not, man. Merchandising. Yeah, that's why Merchandising. I'm sh I'm sure Baby Yoda would have made a ton of money on uh, on that Christmas when Mandalorian came out that first year, but yep. thank goodness they didn't release. Like I've said this before, but if you don't, if Baby Yoda reveal doesn't happen at the end of that episode, that episode, maybe even the entire show wasn't looked at the same way. Like that was massive. That was a massive thing. Like that episode was fine. It's an okay episode. It's not amazing, but Baby Yoda mm -hmm. shows up and you're like, you take a step back and you say, okay, that is what am I in mm -hmm. for now? Yeah. 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 So uh, Batman, guys, I'm not going to hold you much longer. We'll wrap it up on that. All of us were very disappointed in the Batman. We're not looking forward to it. I think it's probably a piece of crap. 88% <laughs> hogwash. That means 8.8 .8 people. That means eight adults and like an eight-year-old all like this movie. Uh, and that's pretty good. For me. That's, you know, we always, you got to look at it that way, right? If something gets 50% around to us, that means five out of 10, half the people who went to go see that movie liked it. That's not really that bad when you think about Star Wars. All right. <laughs> we'll wrap it up right now. Steve, I know you have nothing to plug, but thanks for joining me on Super Tuesday. And Scotty, why don't you plug away your YouTube channel? Yeah, it's Hawks Holocrons. I do a lot of gaming streams over there, but. I'm hyped about the new Star Wars stuff that's coming, especially uh, the Acolyte. I want to get into doing a lot of High Republic talk, too. So if people want to see reviews on the comics, the bu the books, things like that, um, nobody I know on YouTube is really talking about that stuff anymore. So I'm going to try to get back into that because there's the new show coming that is rumored to be High Republic-centric. And I just want to hype that up a little bit because I think people are getting misconstrued with like the stranger things rumors of it all this high republic era is a time where the dark side's not really existent so